the coach, and this is Monday Night Football on EA Sports. Ahead, we'll see the runner-up and rookie of the year balloting Baker Mayfield and the Cleveland Browns as they match up with Jimmy Garoppolo and the San Francisco 49ers. I'll be back at halftime to look at some of these stats and scores from Sunday's action. But for now, it's Monday Night Football. And to call the action, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. From the host of Super Bowl 50 back in February of 2016, there's a look at the home of the 49ers, Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. The scene a short time ago, this crowd, they love their 49ers, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. And we're ready for football as the 49ers get set to do battle with the Cleveland Browns. Hi again, everyone. Brandon Gordon alongside Charles Davis. And Charles, you take a look at these 49ers as they interplay here. They've got to be pleased with a start to this season. Obviously, a perfect 3-0. Three good quality wins, too. It's got people in the locker room excited. They're thinking that this could be their year. Meanwhile, for the Browns here, it's been all systems go in this first month. They're off to a 4-0 start. And it's got folks believing that this is a team that's built to go all the way. You can't win the Super Bowl in September, but they're telling everyone that they're going to be there in the end. Certainly the game of the weekend, maybe the game of the year, the battle of the unbeatens as we get underway. This one taken just inside the 10. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. Baker Mayfield, the second-year quarterback from Oklahoma, will pilot this offense as the Browns get set for their first drive. So they'll come up first in 10 now from the 33. They'll run with a third-year man. This is Tariq Cohen. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. They'll wind up getting a yard on the game's first play. It's second down. And a peek now at the offense for Cleveland. And they're coming off a good win on the road last week, but they do know that they have a home game next week. So all the focus has to be, can they get a second win on the road and make going home that much sweeter? That's the intention in this ball game. On second and nine, Mayfield. 14 yards, and it's a Cleveland first down. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works the defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. It's a gain of 10, and the Browns are going to get a first down. Well, I think that's what they're going to need to do here in the first half. You've got to take some pressure off of this young quarterback. And no better way to do it than to establish the running game early. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 42-yard line. To throw, Mayfield escaping the pressure right. He'll try and run it. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. And finally marked down at the 23. That one a broken play, but it ends up being a good play. The scramble goes for 20. Partner, it's often the man coverage is easier for a quarterback to run against. You get your receivers going downfield, those guys are staying with them, and oftentimes they have their back to the quarterback, which opens up a lot of space and room, and they don't even know that he's taken off with it. What a big-time pickup on that play. A gain of three, second down. This is how the defense will look for San Francisco. They're going to need to be strong against the run in this one. Now if they could just get their pass defense in line, this unit would be really, really strong. And remember the conversation with the defensive coordinator? He wants them to rush the passer better. He wants to see the quarterback on the ground. They've got to create some sacks. And he said it starts early and often. We'll see if they can get to him. The last run got three. Now here's second and seven. They'll run on second down with Cohen. And he's brought down just outside of the 10 at the 11. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. 
The impressive opening drive continues and just space being created by those guys up front. We're seeing this the same way, aren't we? We are seeing an offensive line as this game gets started, as it starts to unfold, that they are dominating the line of scrimmage. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. They go with Chubb on second down. And he'll be stopped just outside the five at the six. And now timeout is whistled as it appears there's a Brown shaken up on the play. Well, he gets attended to. We'll step aside. Eighth play of this opening drive coming up. This is third down. Mayfield hands it off to Chubb. And he'll barrel his way into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Nick Chubb, his third touchdown now on the year as his guys are able to strike first here in this opening quarter. One of the keys to their long winning streak has been scoring first, an ideal drive right there, getting the first six points of the ball game. Do you go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator? Oh, Remember yeah. what he told us? Absolutely. With some teams, I script to probe in the early part of the game. Other teams, I script to attack. They've been in attack mode for these ball games and continue that in this one. Point after, right down the middle. And it's now a 7-0 game. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And Nick Chubb, the one to finish it off as he does so with a touchdown run. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. So here are the Niners now to get their first drive. They'll be led out by their six-year quarterback, Jimmy Garoppolo, out of Eastern Illinois. And coming off of an early season open week. And in this situation, what he told us when we sat down with him was he spent a lot of time working on fundamentals, kind of getting back to basics during that time, as opposed to having to worry about healing up or resting up. It's too early in the season. Get back to the basics, get his game going again. Garoppolo going to bring the Niners up here first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. And here's a good way to kick off a drive complete over the middle. And they'll get it all the way up about five yards shy of midfield. Just like that, a pickup of 20 on their first play from scrimmage. The big play to start him out. Has him at the 45 already. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. He was looking that time for Dante Pettis, and that'll bring up second down. And the starting crew now for San Francisco. And they should come in pretty well rested because they had their open week last week. Ideally, all teams want to have that open week later in the year rather than this early. But you make do with what they give you. So you take the time off, rest up, heal up, and come in ready to play. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Time for a look at our starters here on defense. And this unit, very tough to throw against. Currently second best in the NFL. And this unit knows exactly where they rank. They're number two against the pass in the NFL. You know they have their sights set on being number one, looking for a big game today. The last catch did get three, but they're still left needing seven yards on third down. Garoppolo now. Good win, able to haul it in. And he'll go down, but not before getting this inside the 30. It's a gain of 26 as they pick up the first down in the process. So a first and 10 upcoming from Brown's territory now at the 27. A first carry for the former Falcon, Tevin Coleman. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Plays like we just saw there, that's why they're up right now. And the defense, they're doing their job. Yeah, it starts with the guys up front. So when you talk with GMs or putting together a team, a lot of them say, we're going to build from the inside out because if you control the line of scrimmage, you control the rest of the ball game. And that's what we're seeing here. They're actually playing in the offense's backfield, not necessarily just playing at the line of scrimmage. On second and 12, Garoppolo. And across the chalk, into the end zone. It's a 49er touchdown. Marquise Goodwin, his third touchdown now on the year as his guys are on the board here in this first quarter. 
And a nice job by... And oh, it's blocked! That's a live ball scooped up by the offense. Following the botch PAT, they're set to kick this one away. This one fielded at the five. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. Whatever he was doing in September, they're hoping that that carries over now to October because he was sensational last month. He absolutely was, and we all know where it started at the end of last season, right? All the offseason preparation, the weight workouts, the sprints, right? The vision that he had, what he was going to do this season, and of course it all came together with the rest of the team. Those big fellows up front, leverage, and boy, are they getting down and creating extra blocks for them. They really are. Everyone's been doing their job so far to create those holes. First down, a run with Cohen. Got a pretty big hole as he's down to about the 40. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. From the 40 now on second down, Mayfield. Got a man, it's caught inside the 10. Holding offense. Now that's one they Still hate. The ball's got to come all the way back. So that's an explosive play, a really explosive play that gets wiped out, and they have to start over after the penalty. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Mayfield now from the 50. And his throw here is incomplete. He was out there waving his arms, saying, throw it here, dropped it, not a good look. Well, all I can do is just look at him with contempt on that one. As a defensive back, I'm saying, not as an announcer. Just like, really? A little bit of a diva look, isn't it? Yeah, very much so, because I think what happens is he just had too much time to think. He's wide open now. Here comes the ball, and he doesn't concentrate and drops it. Big yardage there for the Browns, 18. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll try to counter here, Cohen. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Tariq Cohen, his fourth touchdown on the year. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Well, partner, that was another explosive run. And one thing I've learned in our time in this game, yes, the offensive line has to get a lot of credit. But for big runs to occur, the wide receivers have to block well downfield. And then you have to have a good guy carrying the ball too, right? Oh, without a doubt. You need that difference maker lugging the rock. Joseph now to have the PAT. And it's up. It's good. Our score, 14-6. to six. The drive summary that time, five plays. And a pretty good run there in the end to top it off. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. Hey, come on out here. Come get some. Come get some. Come out here. Come get some. Play fake there to Coleman. Now Garoppolo. And that is intercepted by the Pro Bowl quarterback Denzel Ward. And the possession is theirs at their own 43-yard line. Try to get one more in here before the quarter breaks. They'll start things on first with Torrey Cohen. And it's a big play there as he is finally taken down on what will be a terrific final act of this first quarter. After one, 14-6 our score on EA Sports. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. On first down, they go right back to Cohen. And he'll take this one down near the 15. Give him maybe a yard, quite the opposite from the previous big gainer. 
On second and nine, Mayfield. He'll get that complete to the tight end, Harris. That catch good for five. It's third down. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Throw it. Mayfield. And Joku pulls this one in. He's got it for a Cleveland touchdown. David Njoku, his first touchdown on the year. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. Brandon, my man, just one sentence for that one. Clinic. And that's what they've done. They lead the league in points per game this season, but it's been quick strike ability as we saw in that drive. I think they're actually intimidating defenses because they're back on their heels right away, wondering where it's going to come from, how they're going to hit them. This group is well-organized, well-coached, and extremely confident in what they do. Mayfield's pass complete to number 85, David Njoku. It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. Extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Just a four-play drive that time, and it ends with a touchdown for Cleveland. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. Set to take over again here on offense, Jimmy G and the 49ers. A lot of the problems have been on the other side of the ball. Is that frustrating for a quarterback who's been playing well? It is, but there's no way that the best ones let their teammates know that. They actually take it upon themselves and say, okay, I have to do even more or I need to play better. Maybe even say, I put my defense in a bad spot. That's what true leadership shows you. Yeah, well, he doesn't need to change much personally. On second down, it's Coleman. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. It looks like a nickel set now for the Browns on third down. A shotgun snap for Garoppolo. This one into the hands of Kittle, the tight end. And he'll be taken down well before the first at about the 36-yard line. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Mayfield going to lead the Browns up now, first and 10 at the 20. Now they'll run it with Cohen. And they're able to get this one across the 35. A good play there as the Browns strike for 16 and a first down. Oh, you talked about the need for them to establish the run early. They've been able to do that here in the first half. And that means that the whole offense has adopted that attitude and that persona. We're going to take care of this young quarterback. Let's all get together and run it and take the pressure off. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. On second down now, it's Cohen. And he'll get it out to midfield. Looks like, yeah, they'll spot it right at midfield at the 50. That one, a first down pickup of eight. On first down, they'll run with Chubb. And the reinforcements come in as they're going to stop him behind the line. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. I know the speed is the hallmark of today's NFL game, but the key to good rushing defense is still having your linebackers set the edge. They'll try to throw here. Mayfield. And off his back foot, he'll heave this one deep. And that will be incomplete. Tried to dial up the long way way out there, but it'll be third down. The Browns on third down. A perfect three for three as they look to keep that streak going. This is third down and 12. He finds Beckham complete. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. 
That's the number two receiver in the NFL in terms of yardage. And tell you what, a few more plays like that, he won't be number two for long. But well, that's what often happens when you have competitors running around the field. These guys know where they stand in relationship to yardage, totals, numbers, the whole deal. And let's face it, all of them, they all want to be number one. Just a yard on the first down carry, so it's second and nine. This is Cohen. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Two minutes remaining in this first half of football. A reminder coming up just a few minutes from now. We'll send you to Jonathan Coachman and our crew in Orlando. Coach will have a look back at some of the stats and scores from yesterday's action. Meanwhile, on third down, they take a shot at the end zone, but it's incomplete. But well, one thing's for sure, when you get a big receiver and you trust him downfield, you can give him opportunities to go up and get that 50-50 ball. And he is a darn good big receiver. Unfortunately, that time didn't work out. Nice job defensively. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. This is taken at his four. He's going to be stopped here with a penalty marker on the field. Personal foul. I'm not sure what this Face is about. Mask. Defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't Let's matter go. anymore Let's how go. you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. And now it's first and 10. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. Picked off by Demarius Randall. Partner, when you're playing cover two, this is like a tag team for the safeties. Each of them gets a half field responsibility. Their job, stay as deep as the deepest receiver in any zone, read the football, and go make a play. In this case, the free safety made the best play, an interception. Eric Armstead, the defensive end, will get credited for the sack. And they need to work to at least get some of this yardage back after the sack. Second and 19. And he'll get this only up to about the three-yard line. The 49ers now are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Back near his goal line, here's Mayfield. Steps away to his left. He's going to run, but he's got a long way to go. Big yardage there on the scramble. It gets him a first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. Let him know, let him know. Let him know. Mayfield now looking to throw on first down. They'll let it go deep. Is this intercepted? It is. It's intercepted. It's the former Seahawk, Richard Sherman. And his crew will take over with a football at the 35-yard line. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. It was still more than a minute to go in the half. Time to try to mount a drive. And I would think that they would have to. This is today's NFL. you got to push it whenever you get an opportunity. You can never have enough points with the high-powered offenses that you face. And analytics will tell you, try and score when given the opportunity. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Now, meanwhile, here's a second down throw that's knocked away and incomplete. T.J. Carey right there in coverage. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Throwing there, but this pass is going to wind up incomplete. More problems here on third down. They've converted only once so far in this first half. And you know as well as I do in this league, if you don't win on third down, it makes it hard to win a ball game because then you're relying on your defense, you're relying on your special teams. You've got to get it done with your offensive unit. 
Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. He's already cruised past the 100-yard mark. We haven't even gone away for halftime yet. He might not want halftime. <laughs> All right, why cool off? He, he's got a man complete. Odell Beckham Jr. And all the way in. Touchdown, Cleveland. Odell Beckham, an 80-yard touchdown. And the Browns are going to tack on to their advantage. One play, 80 yards. Pretty easy drive to recap. <laughs> it certainly is, but not so easy to execute. Starting on your own 20, you want something to kickstart your drive and get it off to a nice start. They went for the whole thing and got it. That's a great way to send a message to the opposing team. Extra point right down the middle. And the route is on here in this first half. Those are the ones the offensive coordinators dream about. One play drives from that distance. What an effort. It results in the touchdown. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. The 49er offense set to get this drive underway. You've got less than 30 seconds left here in the half. You're well on your own side of the field. What are we doing here, Coach Davis? Well, I'm trying something on first down. And it's something that's safe. It's something that's been done many times before. A lot of people say it's not even worth trying, but I'm running a draw. I'm running a screen. I'm seeing if something pops. And if it does, that could alter my strategy and potentially get me some points. And if it doesn't work, well, then you just run the clock out and go to the block board. And he still has yet to get on track in this first half as they're going to stop him behind the line. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. So we are at halftime here on a Monday night as we send you cross-country to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman is there and has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. We'll begin up at... Due to time constraints, we move you forward in today's broadcast to the beginning of the third quarter. Both teams appear ready for the fight ahead, and we resume action here in quarter number three. This will be fielded at the six. And he'll take this across the 25, a couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Looking ahead to week six of the NFL, some big games next weekend, including the first London game of the year. Panthers and Bucks, they'll do battle in the UK. And back home, it all starts Thursday night with one that a lot of folks have circled on the calendar. The Giants and the Patriots. The Pats may be still stinging from the losses of Super Bowl 42 and 46 at the hands of the Giants. Took just one play to move all the way to the 44 as they try again on first down. They'll run with Coleman on first down. And they're able to swarm him behind the line, and his rough night continues. Call it a full three yards in the wrong direction there. Brings up second down. Number 53, Mike 53. All day, dog. They stay on the ground. Again, it's Coleman. Just a yard there, so it brings up a tough third and 12. Well, they certainly have been able to get him going and establish the run, so I think it's time to abandon that plan and start chucking it all over the park. And you know who's excited about that? The defensive front. They got just to pin their ears back and get after him now. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone, eventually that becomes man on man, and you've got to trust yourself and go up at that moment of truth and make a play on the football. So here are the Browns to take over. They're working on a four-game winning streak, and they lead this one as well right now as they start first and 10. They run. This is Cohen. Gets this to the 24 for a gain of four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. Again, it's Cohen. And an alley to run. He's got a convoy, and he might be gone. 
And all the way in, touchdown, Cleveland. Tariq Cohen, 76 yards, as his guys continue to pour it on. This offense, they were dynamic in the first half. The halftime break, that didn't slow them down at all. Big strike here in the third quarter. It's almost as if they were saying, it's not just our skill in the first half is getting this done, it's confidence as well. And confidence has taken over this game in a big way. How about these strikes that we're seeing? Joseph on for the extra point. And he's been a busy man, five for five now, as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. The quick strike ability certainly intact there. Two plays, 80 yards to score it. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This is taken at the three. The 49ers getting set to trot out there. They are right now just ice cold. I mean, they have struggled big time in this game, and they're getting blown out. How do they adjust? So tough because we always talk about it being a team game, and you need all 11 working well together. But every now and then, partner, you need that one guy who can make a play against all odds that maybe can ignite things. And I think that's what they're looking for right now. Yeah, you talked about going to your playmakers. They probably need to do it. Find someone that you're used to touching the football that makes big plays and give them that opportunity to maybe wake up everyone else. Now a deep ball there on second down, but it'll wind up incomplete. Throwing his Garoppolo on third down. Drops it off for Coleman. And that's not going to get it done. He'll come up well short of the first at about the 21. So much about this game is just understanding situations and then having to execute, isn't it? Guard the first down sticks. Don't let them get there. And they rallied and made the tackle. This is taken at the 18. 21 yards, well done on the return. And the Browns will take over, first and 10. Tariq Cohen and the rest of the offense heading back out there. He is north of 200 yards. Any time that you can say you're north of 200 yards, you've done something right. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna get some big check marks on your grade sheet, and you're gonna be in heavy rotation on all the highlight shows. And you might even make a magazine cover or two. <laughs> He's hoping for more. The cherry on top, maybe, as this game goes forward. They try again with Cohen. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A good pick up there for the Browns, 15 yards. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. They'll run on first down. It's Cohen, and for one of the first times all night, he is going to go nowhere as they bury him behind the line. Call it a loss of two on the play, and that'll make it second and 12. Well, from my vantage point, that's just one bad play by the offensive line and a running back who's had a, a lot of good ones tonight. Yeah, but that doesn't mean he's not going to be ticked off, nor is the offensive line, because to me it's a lot like a no-hitter, right? Pitcher's throwing a no-hitter, gives up a hit late. You're so close to accomplishing everything you want and don't quite get it done. They'll come back with a vengeance on the next play. Here we go, here we go. Cut. From the gun, it's a give to Chubb. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. It didn't happen on that play. Now, meanwhile, a pass that should have been intercepted, but it winds up falling incomplete. Pretty nice coverage there, but a missed opportunity for an interception. Let's face it, a lot of these defenders, they've got it all. Speed, athleticism, hands, a little bit questionable. He can run for it, and he will. 
Nothing open downfield. He keeps it himself for 11 and a first down. How many times do we hear that third down may be the most important down in football? And there's no better example than what we just saw right there. Forced to scramble, knows where the first down marker is, dives for it, and gets it. What a big time play, putting his body on the line to pick up a key first down. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Cohen. And from the nine, they get this to the five-yard line. On any running play that's called, they're always hoping that it's going to break big and go the distance. But when you get a nice game like that, you're able to do so many things anyway. You can come back and run essentially the same play again, continue to move the ball on the ground, or you can decide to throw the ball now because usually... And he takes this one in for a Brown score. Nick Chubb with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year, as his guys continue to put this one out of reach. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This is taken at the three. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the side and puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. Garoppolo on the draw to Coleman. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. They will run again with Coleman. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Back now here in Santa Clara. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Yeah, he was looking for the checkup bounce, didn't get it. That scoots all the way into the end zone now for a touchback. Beckham and the Browns set to take over again. And I know that they've double teamed him a couple times, but not a ton. Whatever they're doing isn't working. He's up over 100 yards. We'll see how they adjust. And when they do that, they weaken their defense in other places as well. And how many times have we done games where we've seen a guy have a big game like this? But it's usually not by himself. It's usually it opens it up for other people to have big games as well. And he'll be upended after a gain of five, up to the 25-yard line. Well, Brandon Pace comes into play now because they've got the advantage. They've got the football, but they've got to be very careful about what speed they're going to play. You know, my, my music teacher back in New Paltz, this is my theme Bagley, used to say, don't go prestissimo when you really want to go Largo. And what she meant by that is don't go too fast when you really want to go at a nice, slow, deliberate pace. I am speechless. I am without speech. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Mayfield. It's caught. Beckham. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Browns touchdown. Odell Beckham, his second touchdown of the game and his ninth on the year as his guys continue to pour it on. So another score there, and often you talk about the three phases of the game, defense, offense, special teams. It's been a clean sweep in this one, hasn't it? It certainly has. They've been pretty dominant throughout this game. And privately, the head coach will add a fourth phase. That's the coaching. And he'll tell the ownership that as he tries to negotiate a new contract off of this win. Yeah, they are looking strong here in the fourth quarter. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. 
And San Francisco gets set to go here. And right now, these guys, they're shuffling a little bit, maybe doubting, because three straight drives have ended with him punting the football away. Yes, yeah, so you start pointing fingers at each other a little bit, asking a lot of questions. What are you seeing? What are you getting? Maybe trying to narrow down your playbook a little bit and maybe get simpler rather than more complex in order to try and fashion together a drive. They'll come up now, second and four from the 31. There's Garoppolo to throw. That's caught. It's Coleman. And tackled down after a gain of three. Leaves him with one yard to go on third down. Here we go, here we go. The Niners on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. They're up against a third and one situation. To throw, it's Garoppolo. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is embolden the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Fielded at the 20. Well, he wasn't too far from breaking that. Officially, give him 15. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Heading out as a Cleveland offense now as they get set to take over here. And this game comfortably in hand. The scoreboard speaks for itself, but you still got your starting quarterback out there. When do you go to the backup, let him get some time? And that's one of the great questions in the NFL, Brandon, because I'm just gonna tell you, in the 2015 season, I commentated on three games in a row that were blowouts. And in none of them did the starting quarterback ever come out of the game for the team that had a big lead. And in each instance, I asked the coaches later on, why didn't you do that? And they all looked at me and said, just don't really do that in the NFL. We, you know, these guys play, and we just play them all the way through. Now, in certain situations, they, they will take them out, but for the most part, they're not as worried and concerned about getting them out of the game. And that's always puzzled me a little bit. Now on third down, that pass knocked down in the backfield and incomplete. And with things looking pretty good on the scoreboard, they're going to keep the offense out there and go for it here on fourth. Opted to run for it. The decision, a good one. Picking up the first, getting 14 yards on the scramble. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. They try and run on first down, but to no avail. Tackle for a two-yard loss in the backfield. A loss of two there, second down. They'll keep it on the ground. Cohen, and maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. That'll set him back with a loss of three on the play. And they're going to be staring at a third and long here. Third and 15 here after the first and second down plays went in the wrong direction. Now a shot taken on third down, but it's going to wind up incomplete fourth quarter you've got the big lead if you're coaching Charles you, you still taking shots like that downfield I'd be a little more concerned with running some clock and making sure you're taking care of the lead because you keep flinging it around you throw a couple of picks you could put yourself in jeopardy now the offense not going anywhere they're staying out there they've converted once already on this drive here they go again on fourth down flushed out right he's gonna run but he's got a long way to go now he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That pickup goes for 25. What a flip of the script from fourth down to first. Containing him is becoming a big problem. We've already seen this once earlier on this drive. Yeah, and so now two times this has happened. Do you adjust something? Yeah, I think you do. I think you have to start thinking about your rush lanes. Try not to either get too wide or too narrow. Make sure someone is there waiting for him to take off. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that can be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. He got caught for the penalty. They run on first down as they're able to get this forward for about four. Four yards on the pickup. It'll be second down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. Good. 
So the Browns in possession of the football here as we get you reset. They've got a second down now as they look to salt this one away. Now Cohen. They get just a yard back there, and now they'll be looking at a tough third and 15. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. And what that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. And not much running room. Down to the 32. Give him three yards there as that'll take us to fourth down. So where'd all that running room that he had in the first half go? Because it looks like it's drying up a little bit here. Someone made some adjustments, it appears, at least on this drive. Under pressure, and he will go down. Sack back at the 38. Eric Armstead. And the 49ers are going to get the football back. So we were looking at each other up here in the booth when they went for that, saying, oh, wow, talk about trying to add insult to injury. Some teams are just like that. You know, some philosophies, some coaches are like, look, when I got a chance to put some more points on the board, I don't care what the situation, I'm going to do it. Here we go, here we go, here we go. And they're also the same coaches as a general rule. But if someone does it to them, you won't hear people protest out of them. That's just who they are. Completes it to Coleman. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll bring up a second down. Here we go, here we go. The Browns will quickly use their third and final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. A second down pass play there, but it's incomplete. He was hoping to get that one to Tevin Coleman in space. But now it's third down. They head to the line facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down. Looking to throw, Garoppolo. So many times we end a game, and as we're recapping it, we're talking about what offenses did and how they won the game. Let's flip this one over. The defense, they frustrated the offense the entire ball game. That's why they're walking out of here with a victory. And they're going to love to walk out of here with that as their final act, that interception. Good way for them to end it. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 19 yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. And a little bit of space there takes it inside the five to the three. Well, the lead late in the fourth, but Mayfield's going to throw it. And this will be caught. And the carnage continues. It's another touchdown. And for them, this train, it just keeps rolling, doesn't it? Well on their way to yet another victory. Yeah, it's almost a runaway, isn't it? And you just wonder how anyone can stop this. they got full momentum going, full confidence going. But it's not just their own confidence that is leading them. It's the lack of confidence against their opponents now because they see them coming and think, we've got no shot to beat this team. And is there bad blood here? I mean, go for two when you're up that much? If there wasn't before, there is now. When you do that, you've just announced to everyone, you just don't care about the other side at all. All you care about is what you're doing, and they just want to pile up points. They did. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. The San Francisco offense ready to start their next drive. They've lost this one. Their offense has struggled. Do they try to put together something here at the end just to take in the next week? Yeah, sometimes teams want to do... Well, this is taken in. It's complete. And they'll get this well past midfield before being stopped just before the 35. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And... The defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So for Cleveland, they improved to 5-0 now on the young season. And they will head back home next week. Meanwhile, for the Niners, the defeat is their first of the year as they drop to 3-1. And, and they'll look to regroup next week as they head to L.A. to take on the Rams.